Yeah. Yep. Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let's call the meeting of the East Hampton Village Zoning Board to order. But first, I want to say Happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Um, first, we have to approve the minutes of January 10th, 2020. If there are no additions or corrections, I'd like a motion to accept. Motion as second. submitted. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, next, we have four determinations um, in our new shortened version. I will just tell the name and what the determination was. Thank you, Beth. <laughs> and after which, Mrs. Miss Bennett will poll the board. And anybody who wants further information, it will be in Village Hall. The first one is the Lewis Family 2002 Trust. And that is the disposition of the application is approved. Yes. 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 Next we have Joseph and Amy Perella. The disposition of application is approved. Yes. 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 The third one is Robert and Rosalind Walcott. The disposition of application is denied. Yes. Yes. <coughs> yes. Yes. And the final one is George Doty and Leanne Spellman. The disposition of application is approved. Yes. 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 And uh, the next for the ongoing hearings, we have four requests for adjournments. James D. Danella at 49 La Forest Lane until March 13th, 2020. Zay1 LLC at 19 Chauncey Close and Zahn 2 LLC at 23 Chauncey Close. They've also requested an adjournment until March 13th, 2020. And Nicole and Alan Salmasi at 73 Davids Lane, they are putting it off once again to March 13, 2020. Um, okay, then the, the new hearings. We will start with Edward W. Williams, QPRT, and Lisa B. Williams, QRPT. 200 at Lily Pond Lane. Miss Bennett, will you please read the notice? Application of Edward W. Williams, QPRT, and Lisa B. Williams, QPRT, subcounty tax rent number 301, 15 to 8.1 for fresh wetlands, for wetlands permit to chapter 278 zoning to construct a detached garage, a shed, a patio, a driveway, a pergola, and install vegetation. The wetlands permit invariances of 64 feet, 58.5 feet, 24.3 feet, 59 feet, and 40 feet are required from section 278 to construct a detached garage located 86 feet from wetlands, slate patio located 81.5 feet from wetlands, a shed located 125.7 feet from wetlands, a pergola located 91 feet from wetlands, and a drive, driveway located 110 feet from wetlands, where the required setbacks are 150 feet. The wetlands permit in Section 278388 is required to install vegetation directly adjacent to a wetland. A 26.2 foot variance is required from Section 278384A to construct the shed located 48.8 feet from the front yard lot line for the required setback is 75 feet and any other relief necessary. The subject property is 106,600 square feet of area located at 280 and is in the Northern State of Darwin City. The property is located in FEMA flood zones AB elevation 10 and the project is classified as a type 2 action in accordance with CEQA. Is the applicant present? Good morning, Chairwoman Marigold, members of the board. I'm Britton Bistrian, here representing the Williams family, owners of the property at 200 Lily Pond Lane. Um, 
the project is described as to build a 682 square foot garage, patio, driveway, as well as a 140 square foot shed and a pergola over an existing patio. We also propose to remove a few structures that are actually closer to the wetlands than all the proposed structures, um, a frame building, a pen. Um, the property, as you note on the survey, is very irregularly shaped. It's approximately 800 feet on its um, western edge, running along the edge of Lily Pond. There's no conforming envelope um, on this almost 2.5 acre property for additions. However, all the additions that we're proposing, as I noted, are further from the existing improvements to be removed. <coughs> And the net result is a reduction in lot coverage from 6,275 square feet to 5,956. We've also proposed um, about 5,100 square feet of revegetation along the pond um, with native vegetation. Right now what exists is sort of lawn up to the pond and um, the, this buffer uh, runs, runs the expanse of where we're having the proposed improvements. We thought that was um, pretty reasonable mitigation. Um, the project does have New York State DEC approval, and we have, um, I have spoken with the East Hampton Town Trustees as the, you know, owner of Lily Pond, and they um, also conceptually approve the, pro the project, although I don't need to seek an actual permit from them. Can I have a question? Sure. Well, why is there a patio on the garage? It's, it's the best spot in the property for a view. Um, there's a very small patio on the existing house, which is where we're proposing the pergola. So the idea was for that to have a shade structure and then to replace that patio with an un unshaded structure um, on the other side of the property. It's, you know, it's a very elongated property, so they want to enjoy the whole thing, and um, it just worked and in the you design. Have, you have a garage, and then you have a proposed shed. It's kind of, it's kind of two, mm. two in one. Well, the garage is for cars and the sheds for more boats and other things. Um, note that there, because of the floodplain and the groundwater, there is no basement here, so <clears throat> storage is at a premium. Um, w will a car be able to get into the elongated part of the the garage? Uh, yes, there's. Uh, that's what the proposed driveway is to. No, there's get a driveway to. straight on, right? You can't get in this side. Where the patio is going to go. Sorry, the the the, uh, the south side of the garage. No, the garage. The car will just enter where the driveway shows it entering on the north. I think you're asking on the west side, though, right? Yeah. 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 The There's an overhead. The west side has an overhead door. I assume you'd have to drive over the lawn. And there's shrubs. To to it. There's shrubs that circled it, and there's still. A still on the uh, so how would you get a car in we wouldn't necessarily use that side of the garage for cars it would be for more for boats or things that you would enter well the, is there where would where is the entrance of the garage let me just point david tosher who's the design professional on the project maybe would like to speak to that, well, I think I could that. the idea of the second bay that's uh with door to the west is that's their winter storage so it's once or twice onto the lawn in the autumn and then back out in the spring. So you're going to take those old sh yeah, the the shrubs Yeah, the old big out? shrubs that are overgrown, they're, they're coming out. Yeah, because actually, um, you know, we have our, in, in our code that a garage has to be for the storage of, of cars and it has to be accessible. Right. Uh, I mean, it sure doesn't look like a garage. It doesn't smell like a garage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have these well, gorgeous it, it, windows. <laughs> Well, there are there are garage doors. I mean, it's it. Uh, it's, yeah, but it's explain the beautiful windows. In well, the, uh, uh, to look. I mean, the, the, the main car, thing the was car that, or the um, boat can't <laughs> enjoy the view. The owners have understood that for years, as their their parents and grandparents that overlooked all that property. That the only part of the property that was uh, ever not looking really nice were the buildings on the property. Originally, uh -huh. there was a little gray ranch house there and that was changed over to a nice little cottage it's still a one-story cottage it was, it was always beautiful it was always well it was always beautiful was always, the property was immaculate the property was always beautiful was and nice. really well maintained the the structures that are remaining there if you were to walk onto the property are really they are what they are now they are not what they were 30 years ago 
when Vaughn uh, used to be the caretaker there and kept everything in pristine shape. And they thought that, uh, came to me and said, we want something that looks really nice. We want a garage that looks nice. I said, well, most garages look like garages mm -hmm. or carriage houses, but let's do a garage that looks like a boathouse because we got the water there. And that was the inception of this, of that idea. So how to make the doors look, be garage doors, but look like something else, it, it was what I was tasked with. And that's kind of what we came up with. Then the question is, if it's not a garage, is the legality to have that building as not a garage? I mean, that, that's... It is a garage. But, but, but apparently it's not gonna be used for cars that much. It, no, it's a, well, it's one car all winter long in one side and the other one for the daily use you know, for the uh, five months. The that one that here. you do go directly yes, that, into and so will be what daily I, use, I and the other will be storage you know, of a car. We would do a, a, a grass block driveway to the other one, mm -hmm. and uh, one thing led to another. Well, is there any way we can not do have to have another driveway? So we proposed it that it would be this way because the second one is really only used twice a year or four times a year at most. Can we have it inspected? Yeah, I was say, year. can it be not? You know, driving. can't be finished. I mean, forever. Well, we do it. A lot. <laughs> we do it a, unfortunately, we do it a lot on other. Issues I mean, you can have covenants use. filed, but you could say with that the option of, ins but I don't think you want to yeah, require yeah. expense. In, in, right, I mean, we could say that it was for you know, absolutely you know, no residential, right? Or that whatever, no that habitable it, space and no, and that it can't be insulated and it can't be and there's no bathroom is there I mean, no there's okay. no bathroom can you say no can you say no heat air conditioning people do have heat air conditioning they could i mean people do for cars you know if you have a you know an but historic car that you might want to no a garage no well i i don't know i i think we have to leave it to somebody else but i don't have a problem um well um did you see Billy's memo? He he had asked for. Just to clarify one thing, though, the uh, the code prohibits um, insulation in pool houses, but garages you can insulate. Oh, you right can. Now. Yes. Yeah. So you can insulate you it and heat it. Special, you know, certain people. Would you know, certain want people that with their have cars. Classic. That's the word I was looking for. Classic cars. Did you? Did you see his memo about uh, he would? Those three items. Yeah, he was requesting. Um, dry wells, um, a permeable driveway, and temporary silt mesh fencing. Um, are they, uh, those three things agreeable to you? Oh, absolutely. The driveway as shown is permeable. Okay. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> okay, I have no problem, I think. Good. Okay. Yeah, as long as it's not living space. Um, then we will have a determination, I guess, next month on March 13th. And um, is there anybody in the audience that would like to weigh in on this? No. Can we close this hearing? Make a motion. All in favor? Aye. Okay, next is the application of. Ron J. Vinder. Ms. Bennett, please read the application of Ron J. Vinder, section 8.1, 8.11.17.1, the very very since the Eight hundred two square feet of coverage when the maximum permitted coverage is 
8,530 square feet and any other relief necessary. The subject property is 40,202 square feet in area and is located at 10 Maiden Hall Road in Residence District R80. This project is classified as a type 2 action in accordance with the CEQA. The applicant present. Uh, Dave Harvey, D&D &D Harvey Architects for Ron Binder. Um, the applicant is, we're basically asking for a third bay to be added to an existing um, attached garage. Uh, he's, uh, Mr. Bender is recently remarried and the, he needs more space to basically put his stuff out of view from the front yard. It is a small, kind of very oddly shaped uh, property, so there's no room for an accessory garage or an accessory structure, so he's literally limited to that attached garage. So we are basically matching in kind. Um, just moving the existing windows forward, you know, the necessary footage on both ends. Um, there's a front yard setback, so we don't have quite enough to get a third bay with a single addition on the front. We have to take about four feet off and add it to the back. It, it's all within the setbacks. Uh, there's no additional relief needed other than the uh, square footage. I have no... It smells like a garage. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's a house. <laughs> There's a lot of emphasis on garages these days. You have to, you have to admit that. Um, I have no problem with this. No, no it's, uh, it's actually the existing coverage now is, has, is under, and the, the GFA is going to be less than 10%. And if and the coverage is only three percent over. Three percent over. It's what we call de minimis, and. Um, it's a tough lot, but it's a big house. It's just going to be a tiny bit bigger. Um, is there anyone in the audience that would like to s speak on this? No? Everybody in agreement here? Okay. Um, do I have a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now we will go to the last new application, Nadinia C. Rumbau and Donald E. Handelman as trustees on 8 West Dune Lane. Osborne on behalf of the owner. Um, the swimming pool that's being proposed is uh, started out as 20 feet by 40 feet. It's now proposed at 14 by 30. After trying to shrink it and talking with a neighbor, that's how it came to be this kind of small size. Um, the neighbor requested a number of uh, things to go with the pool. If this is approved by the board, they're listed in the application and they're perfectly acceptable to the owner. Um, Is this Tish, the, yes. the one who wrote a letter? Okay. Yes. yes. Um, the pool could go in the west part of the property and meet setbacks, but that's where plantings are and that's where activities take place. And it also would be <clears throat> right in the view from the middle part of the house where a lot of the action takes place, so they didn't want it there. So putting it where it's located Half, about half the pool conforms, half the pool does not. Um, I would note that to the rear there is a new stockade fence, which is it's a double fence, double wall. It will help mitigate any sound impact. Um, otherwise, uh, I think that's about the best we could do. Hot tub is in the pool. Excuse me? The hot tub. Hot tub is within the pool. Okay. It's not separate. It's, if the hot tub wasn't there, the pool would be just one pool, 14 by 30. I have no issue. Um, okay. Got it. This is very easy today. Um, <clears throat> is there anybody else who would like to be heard on this? 
No. Then do I have a motion to a close motion. the hearing? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And a motion to close. So moved. This meeting. Is that a record? Uh, that might be a record. Is that a record? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty it close. It is. <laughs> and I was upset I was last. <laughs> <laughs>